In this video, I want to talk about um, simple patchwork. And in this case, I'm going to make uh, two patchwork placemats using those fabrics right there. And you can do this also without a pattern. Um, patchwork is very versatile where you can cut up all of your um, extra or scrap fabrics into different size squares and um, put them together in different patterns, but in this I'm doing an alternate pattern of every other square is a different fabric. If I introduce um, another color, such as black, then I could change uh, the fabric every third color. But for these patchwork placemats, you would need 20, for each placemat, you need 20 blocks, 20 squares, that are 3 inches by 3 inches. Now, you'll be doing a quarter inch seam allowance on them, so you're, these are, it's going, when it's pieced together, it's going to be smaller than what it looks like there. Um, but it's still a pretty good size placemat. You could add a row on the end um, in this direction and make it um, six squares wide and four down. But I have it five squares wide and four down. And the simple patchwork is very easy to do. I do it a lot. Um, whether I'm planning a project or whether I'm just doing it because I have extra fabric, I might as well sew it together. Now I'm going to do two placemats. So I have, um, for each placemat, I have 10 of the checked fabric and 10 of the spotted fabric. So you need 20 squares total, 10 of each, and you would lay it out like this. And then if you're not familiar with quilting or piecing or patchwork, um, I forget exactly what year that patchwork was um, extremely popular. It, it came back in the 1970s. I think it was around the 1870s to 90s, but I'm not positive, where um, people did patchwork in America quite often. I could be wrong on those years. I'd have to check the history again. But basically what you do is you are going to piece each row together first and then put the rows together. So to do this row, I'm going to take the first square to the second square, put right sides together, and stitch along this seam. Now pretend I've done that, and when it's done, they'll be pieced together here. Then I take the third square, put it on top of the second square, right sides together, and piece it here. So now pretend those three are sewn together. And then I take the fourth square, put it right sides together, and sew here. And then I do the same thing with the final square of, if all four of those first squares are sewn together in a row, I take this one, put it like that, sew this seam. So what I would then have, after sewing those four short seams, is I would have a row like that. It'll be narrower. Um, and then I do the same thing with each consecutive row so that I end up with four rows like that. And placemats are good to start with because they're small. You can fit the whole project right on a table. When you're doing this with, say, a twin size or a full size quilt, um, you'd probably lay this out on the floor and then uh, go back and forth between the floor and the sewing machine. So once I have four rows together, um, four rows individually like that, I would then take this row 
and place it right sides together on top of this row. So each of these fabrics would line up. And this is where lately uh, my piecing was off on one of my quilts and I went back to hand piecing for a time. And um, I learned or relearned that you really need to take care when you're putting these together from the beginning, not just when you put the rows together, but if you put your blocks together, if you cut your blocks correctly, you put your blocks together correctly, everything goes much more smoothly. So if those two rows were each pieced across the row, and then I place one on top of the other, uh, right sides together, now the seam that I sew is right across here. Quarter inch seam on all of them. And then when I open this up, I will have two rows sewn together. And I do that with the remaining two rows. So it's actually very easy, especially um, with a simple patchwork design like this. So what you can do is, okay, so say those two are sewn together. I would repeat the same thing and I sew these two together. So I have um, two sewn together here, two sewn together there. Then I put the two halves together and flip this over on top of this, right sides together, and sew one seam right there. And then I end up with a block of five squares by forty squ uh, by four rows and um, that will be the top part of a placemat. It can also be an actual block for a quilt. Now I am going to make placemats out of this but let's say that I piece that whole section together. Well I can then set it aside and the next time I have 23 inch squares I can make another one and then you can take those and put them together to make a twin size quilt. So starting with small items such as placemats is a good idea because it gives you the skill and the attention that you need to make larger items the same way. And I personally like patchwork. I think economically it's a great way to use up all your fabrics. I think that um, Professional quilters do a lot of intricate piecing that I'm just not good at. I can do it. I can um, concentrate on it. And mine never comes out like a professional quilter. So piecework, I have much less trouble with myself. Um, I know that uh, there are people that are natural piecers and they can just put something together and have it look wonderful. In my case, patchwork will always work for me, even if my squares are off a little bit, because the overall effect um, somewhat hides that. And part of the reason I ran into a problem recently is because I'm working in only red, white, and blue with my quilts for veterans. So if you have a blue square that doesn't line up with a white square, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, but for beginners, um, and myself when I started, patchwork this way, if these end up just a little off, you can see it is obvious, but you, you're not going to throw the quilt out because that's off by a quarter of an inch. It's just that next time you'll do better. So placemats are a good project to start with. Now the other thing, I'm going to use my brother LX3014 instead of one of my antique machines simply because um, as much as I love my antique machines this is the way they're making machines now they're making them less expensive um, they have a lot of functions they're, you know, unless you have a computerized machine your basic mechanical sewing machine is similar to this whether it's a brother or a singer or whatever the brand is so this is current sewing, and 
I recently did a video on oiling it, and, you know, I don't like the way they've designed some things these days. I think oiling everything in here should be very easy. On some of the antique uh, singers, this whole area used to just swing open, and you could um, oil anything you needed to oil. The problem was they used plastic pins that the door sat on, and a lot of times the pins would break and people would lose their faceplate. And the machine itself would still be a fine machine, except it wouldn't have this whole section on it. Um, but they could have fixed that by using metal pins and, and little reinforcing hardware. In other words, um, if this is how they're making them, then this is how we're sewing today. And that's why I'm going to do this project on the Brother. I'm still, um, in the history of sewing, people went from hand sewing um, to chain stitch machine sewing. A French tailor invented a chain stitch machine that he was using for military uniforms. And then after that, the lock stitch machine, which is what these are, were invented. And that brings all the way through history from around 18... 46 to 1850, people have been using lock stitch machines like these. And um, it doesn't matter whether I use one of my antique machines or whether I use a current machine in one way, because what I really need to do is line things up right and piece them correctly. Now, I don't have a piecing foot on here. I'm using the general purpose foot. Because what I'm doing, um, moving from hand piecing back to machine piecing, is I need to retrain my eyes to make sure that I'm p getting a quarter inch seam because I do a lot of quilting and piecing. Now, a piecing foot is a good way to do that, but not everybody has one. So I, I'm leaving on the general purpose foot. And this um, is a clear acrylic rod that is square and it's a quarter inch each way. It's called a quilter's rule. You can buy them just as acrylic rods. Um, I don't think this particular brand is made anymore. But if I line that up right at the needle, the right side edge of the general purpose presser foot is just about a quarter of an inch seam. And I say just about because it's, I, w I would say exact, but nothing is really exact. But my point is, if my fabric always rides exactly even with the right side of the presser foot, my piecing should come out accurately. So what I'm going to do today is go ahead and piece this together. I'll do the rows first and then piece the block together. And then I'll do the second one. And once I have those two blocks of patchwork put together, then I'll decide what I, I'm going to make placemats with these. If you decide to keep it as a block to use as a larger project, you could do that too. What I will then do is cut a piece of batting that is about uh, two inches wider than the whole finished section. I'll press, I'll press this, and when you, when you press the seams, you want to press the seams open and flat. And um, let me back up a little bit. After I stitch each row, I will then press those seams open so that when I attach the first row to the second row, I'm piecing flat open seams. That helps keep everything lined up. So I'll do the stitching, the pressing, the stitching, the pressing, get the block done. Then I'll cut a piece of batting that is two inches uh, wider all the way around. And then I will cut a piece of backing fabric of some kind. I'm not sure what I have for backing fabric, so I may not be able to finish this today. But I will cut a backing fabric that is the same as the batting. 
And then I will take pins either on the first two chickens there, you can see they're curved basting pins, and on the last two chickens are long quilting pins. I'll use either type of those pins and pin all three layers together at each corner. And then I will decide um, which way I want to quilt it. But this video is really just about a simple placemat project that can help train your eye to do accurate piecing.